And what is going down, Oakland Athletics fans, as promised, this is Corporal RFA and the boss man sitting alongside Oakland Athletics President Dave Cobble. Dave, how's your day going so far today? It's been a busy day. I uh, taught my class over at Stanford this morning in sports management, and then I'm over here in the Coliseum this afternoon and this evening, and excited to be here for the fans. Stanford, though, you know, us being East Bay guys. I know, I, mean, I know. It was this East Bay-centric kind of thing, this team, <laughs> and uh, here in Stanford, especially how uh, Cal can't beat you guys in football this last uh, seven, eight years or so, it's a little tough to hear that. Go so. Cardinal, go Cardinal. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we may have to get them up the tight Watt Hill next year. Uh, when, they, when they play I'll, Berkeley. I'll come up there and check out a game. I'm, I'm happy yeah, to. Oh, cool, cool, mm-hmm. cool, man. Thank you for coming, though. Yeah, really, really. This you. is really refreshing. Um, a lot of people that have talked to me over the last month or so since you came on, mm-hmm has said it's so refreshing to get a younger guy, because you're, you're about 40, 41. 41, yeah. 41 years old, looking like he's 25. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, but, um, this is refreshing to get somebody, I guess, who's transparent, who wants to reach out and talk to us. Um, before, not to just criticize anybody, but it, it seemed like, you know, it's, let's just do business and yeah. not reach out. in this, this new social media world that's out yeah. there, you have to reach out and touch people. So really thank you for that, because A's fans are really excited that you're here and that, you're doing what you're doing thus far. Well, thank you for saying that. It means a lot to me. You know, the A's have one of the best fan bases in all pro sports in the whole world. And there's so much passion and excitement about everything that we're doing, and I'm happy to be a part of that. And, you know, someone who can, you know, actually reach out to the fans and create a connection and learn more about what we need to do to be successful. Go ahead and fire away, boss. Oh, fire away. I mean, we want to just jump into the questions. Yeah, whatever. Fire yeah. Well, first, we need to know about the man Dave Cavill, right? Yep, Cavill, not Cavill. Cavaliers, like Cavaliers. Cavaliers so, yeah. So Cavill, Mr. Cavill, tell us where you're from, a little bit about you, why you're involved in the sports industry, because you are involved with the earthquakes as well down the Yeah, I'm the team president there as well, and I've uh, been doing that for the last six years, mm-hmm. um, since 2010. But it started for me back in Cleveland, Ohio. Born and raised, okay. um, you know, Midwest kid, Rust Belt. Uh, went to the Cleveland Browns games. I'm still a season ticket holder to the Browns, which is a tortured existence because they're so bad. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, but nonetheless, yeah. nonetheless um, you know, I grew up loving sport and loving, loving really the experience of attending a game with friends, family members, community members. And that's something that really stuck with me growing up as a boy. And because the seats that we had, we had the O'Leary's in front of us, and we had the Kucinich's, and we had the Smiths behind. And we, you got to know everyone around you. And it really created this unbelievable kind of experience. You kind of grew up around sport. And that's something that I know is so powerful that professional sports can provide. So that's where I grew up. I came out here, you know, back in the early 90s to go to school at Stanford. Um, and then I stuck around, you know, met a girl from the East Bay. And we got married and we have two kids and, you know, been involved in sports really since the beginning. You know, I started a professional baseball league before soccer called the Golden Baseball League. And we had guys like Ricky Henderson played for me in the league, and Jose Canseco, and Jose Lima, and Daniel Nava got started. He was the MVP of our league, and he hit a home run, grand slam home run, his first at bat for the Red Sox. And so it was a great experience, independent baseball all over the West Coast. Um, Then transitioned into soccer with the Earthquakes, built a fabulous new $100 million stadium uh, that has had rave reviews, and now moving over to take on the athletics opportunity as well, something that... It really is a great passion of mine. Um, one thing I didn't mention, which is another part of my you know, background, is that in 1998, I toured all 30 Major League Baseball parks in 38 days. You have a book on that, right? The Summer That Saved Baseball, yep. And so um, it was an amazing experience. We saw a game in all the stadiums. I really got a sense of like what was good and bad in the different ballparks. And it's always made me a little bit of a ballpark aficionado. And so now to be spearheading this process to build a new – ballpark in Oakland for the athletics is really a dream come true for me. So just super excited about that. Now, you did the summer tour in 1998. And I yep. remember that. I was, um, I think I was going to my 10th grade year of high school. Yeah. Let you yeah. know how old I am or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what stadium really stuck out to you? Because, we you know, we had sta- new stadiums built after that in the next decade true. or the new century, what have you. Yep. In 1998, what stadiums really stuck out to you? Like, that's a great fan experience. Well, this is kind of a dud, not so hard. Well, the number one rated stadium in our book in the experience was Fenway Park. You know, it was a good mix of the nostalgia and history with a really intimate environment. And I think that's what I found. I re- we really like Tiger Stadium, too, where they no longer Oh, have. yeah, yeah. And because you were right on top of the action. 
And even in the second deck, they had those cool overhangs. Yeah. You'd sit up there, you weren't that far from the action. The fans were really energetic. The place was lively. And I think some of the newer stadiums that are a little bigger and a little more too many party decks and, you know, luxury boxes have kind of lost that heartbeat. You know, I want to build a ballpark here for Oakland and for the city that has a soul. That's somewhere that people want to go and that actually is exciting to attend the game. You know, like people would come almost as a tourist to see it, the same way we did to see Fenway or Tiger or Wrigley. And so those are the stadiums that stood out. The ones that were terrible were like, um, you know, one of the worst was Minnesota. The Metrodome was no good. That was totally antiseptic and no, no atmosphere. Tropicana was really rough. I didn't have much going for it. That was his first year, too. Was yeah, it was the first year. And then um, it was called Pro Player at the time. But this, it was the Miami one. Yeah. And Joe Robbie. That Joe was Robbie. not great. It was hot. I mean, they had great Cuban sandwiches, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> other than that, it didn't have much going on. So you could see this big dichotomy with the older, intimate, you know, um, historic stadiums. And then you had a lot of these ones that were built, like, in the 60s that didn't really turn out well. Now, most of those have been replaced. They've built a lot of great new facilities since, you know, our trip. I've been to most of them. And I think there's a lot of learning from not only the trip, but also from everything that's been built in terms of what to do and what not to do here with the athletics. You've been on the job here now at the A's uh, since, what was it, about November, roughly about time? Mid-November, exactly. Mid-November. Um, what's things been like here since coming in in mid-November? Like, what, what's the experience you've had so far? How's the feedback been from the fans you've talked to? Did just... First impression so far, your first couple months. Of well, I think the fans are awesome. They're totally welcoming. Um, I think, um, you know, the fact that I have, I'm very, like, open, transparent, like, happy to meet with anyone. I have the office hours, all these kind of things. It, it's really been a good fit because I think the fans have been looking for someone to kind of connect with. And there's a lot of really good ideas. I think that's been my, the number one takeaway. The fans have a lot of great ideas about how to improve the Coliseum, what's where we should build the long-term home of the club, what we should do on the baseball side, all these different pieces. And to be a conduit for that and to be able to take all that input in, especially early on, helps frame my perspective on what to do as the team president. And so it's almost a little like crowdsourcing some of that strategy and ideas around the club. And I think it's something that um, is really a unique thing about what we're doing here in Oakland and only works when you have fans who are passionate and also knowledgeable. People here are knowledgeable. They know their baseball. They know their sports. And that comes through loud and clear. Definitely, definitely. Well, um, just to jump into it, because, you know, you gave some background. When you took this job, when I don't know who hired you, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably Mr. Fisher, mm -hmm. your first, what was your first thought when you said, of the three major sports, I'm actually a team president mm -hmm. of that entity? What was the first thing that went through your mind? Well, I mean, as someone who grew up, you know, I went to Indians games growing up, and I was at the World Series this year. And, like, baseball has a special connection to our country and our community. And it's a sport that brings us all together as Americans. And to be leading one of only 30 Major League Baseball clubs, especially the Oakland Athletics, which has so much history and nostalgia and so much um, positive um, thoughts around it, it, it was really almost overwhelming. Like, it was really something to really think about. And I had to kind of take a deep breath. And, you know, I was very proud for all the hard work that had gone into, you know, 15, 20 years of hard work to get here and all the difficult moments and everything like that um, and risks that I had to take in my career to get to this moment. But I also felt very prepared and excited about the challenge ahead. You know, it's not going to be easy, but I feel that we have a great ownership group. We have an amazing community, and we are going to build an amazing ballpark that's going to transform the city. And the opportunity to do the ballpark, to transform the organization, I saw a lot of that what I did with the earthquakes because we did a similar thing. Um, it's as rewarding uh, an endeavor as you can enter into. Yeah, because a lot of A's fans, because, you know, over the last decade or so with the ballpark, yep. the issues, the, the extra criticisms from people such as Ken Rosenthal yep. and Buster Olney, people like that, kind of got a lot of people down. And with you coming in, people, they ask me, can you please ask them, what is the organization's vision? Because there's been criticisms to say that this is nothing but just a cash cow, just to make money, not to win towels, because there's been maybe certain quotes that have been depicted in that way to say that they're not interested in winning a championship. What can you say to A's fans right now to alleviate those worries, take some of that weight off their chest? Well, I mean, I think the proof is in the pudding. So, you know, anything I say, we're going to have to back up with actions. 
But I think at the end of the day, what I can commit to is one, first of all, openness and transparency. So just being totally honest with the fans about where we are as a club and what we're trying to do. And we are trying to win world championships and bring more World Series here to open one. But two, to do that long-term sustainably, we need a new ballpark that has a great fan experience and that can provide for higher payroll for Billy and David and the team to invest more in players. We're at a significant disadvantage to the other clubs in the league because they have shiny new stadiums with different revenue streams and things like that. And so we've got to solve that. The only way long-term that we can, you know, have 14, 15, 16 world championships, keep adding to the number, going up, up, and up, you know, challenging the Yankees at some point, is for us to create a foundation for success. And that starts with the business side. And that's my job to do that. And I think if people look at what I was able to accomplish down in Dubai Stadium and how we turned that organization around and made significant investments then on the field, I think that's a good blueprint for what can happen here. Okay, now, as we, as we all know, one of your big things, of course, is obviously the future and long-term stability of the franchise. Uh, what's some of the stuff so far that's been considered, you know, short-term-wise, you know, during the situation with the games, staying for the time you engage at the Coliseum, like, you know, I've heard a lot of the ideas from the fans who kick around, but, like, just, what's some of the stuff you're looking at to try to help improve the fan experience here at the Coliseum for the time being while the A's are still playing here? Well, it's a critical um, objective of mine in this first year is to enhance the experience of the Coliseum. I think the first thing, and I hear it all over the time, almost everyone I talk to, is food service. We've got to have a better food experience at the Coliseum. You know, food, and it's more than just hot dogs, is a huge part of coming to the ballpark. Wherever you go, you have signature food items, all these different things. And so we're going to really revamp that this coming season. We're going to bring the food trucks in here for the first time and really create a whole new atmosphere. We're going to embrace the Oakland food movement. There's so many great chefs here and positive things that are happening. And so that's going to just be, you know, uh, a square one. But then even beyond that, I think we can do a better job with, like I said, signature food items. We're going to bring the super nachos back. When I went Thank to you. all, Thank God. God. all God. God. that was one of my favorite food items was the super nachos. It got to happen. It got to yeah. happen. It happen. It's, we're known for that. So we're going to bring the super nachos back. We're going to bring the super dog back, that big, like, half pounder, which would be awesome. Yes. And so it's, I think that's going to be something that people are going to notice right away. The other thing they're going to notice is the stands are going to be open. You know, that was been a hard thing. You come to the games. I came as a fan, and now I came with my old man, and we're walking around the concourse, and it's closed, closed, closed. That doesn't work. you got to open the stands. you got to provide for the fans. Then they'll come and you provide good food with good options, and I think it can be something that really is added into the experience. Uh, a good friend of ours, like Keith Jess, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is funny, this is for us hardcore baseball guys who go to games all throughout the middle of the week. Yeah. Can we do something about the beer prices, though, and stuff? Hey, I mean, we're, looking mean, at, we're looking at all the prices. No, we are. We're looking at okay. every single thing because I, I think you got to look at it holistically. you got to look at pricing. you got to look at assortment. you got to bring in some food trucks to give you some variety. And, and the other thing about the food trucks is then you can bring in vegetarian options, vegan options, gluten-free. I mean, a lot of people have food restrictions oh, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. We do all these different things that we've never had a chance to do before, and which will be huge. See, that's what I that's what I really like about you. That's helping people locally, and you know, here in the Bay Area, we have local breweries. I mean, Anchor yeah. Steam and Fashion over in Alameda. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they would. I think they would love. They would jump at the opportunity just to get involved, just to be right here to work with you guys to kind I of get agree. their name out. Because like you talked about before, community brings us all in together. Well, that's the thing. We are committed to Oakland. You know, we we feel that that's who we are. You see, it. Oakland Athletics. It's in the name, right? Thank and you. so we're doing everything we can to embrace that and really create that as a huge part of who we are as an organization. Oh, really, 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 really good to get. I mean, yeah. as the A's fans, we, we go to a bunch of games together. And yeah, so you know. So, I mean, these are the types of things. And, you know, I think one thing to keep in mind for fans, too, is like, and that's why I like having the office hours and communicating with folks on Twitter and everything, we're always going to be improving. So, you know, ten games in, it's not like, oh, everything's going to happen but, and the first game then it's just going to be over. Whatever, we'll keep changing. Hey, well, this food item didn't work. This food truck was no good. We're going to keep trying to improve at every single moment to have a better experience. And we're willing to take that feedback and have immediate impact on what we're doing. And hopefully that can help make for a better experience in the interim. Because we're still going to be here at the Coliseum for several years, so we want to make sure it's as good an experience as possible. So I heard you say a second ago about opening. So everybody has talked about it for years, that top third deck. The, well, tarps. the tarps. Yeah, the tarps. I mean, it, it, to me mm-hmm. and to others, 
But I'll speak for myself. Yeah. When I see that, it's like, we don't want you here. When I see certain uh, beer stands, hot dog stands shut down, we don't want you yeah. here. We really don't want you here. And somehow, some way, is there a way to change that to kind of mitigate those concerns from people? Because it really has gotten a lot of people's skin, especially. Well, with I, I think everything you're saying makes a lot of sense. And, you know, I'm evaluating everything with the TARP situation and how that would work and how we'd structure it. I mean, there's really – I'm not ready to make an announcement on that yet, but it is something that I've heard from tons of fans. And I understand kind of the feeling around it. And, you know, for us, I think it was done in a way to try to, like, you know, increase or lower the number of seats and really focus everyone down low. But, you know, those were the days – I remember 2001, 2002, I would come to games, and I'd sit up in the second deck when I was going to Stanford to business school, and it was a Rock, I mean, it was the rockest time. I yeah. Mean, it was as good an environment in a sporting event as you could ever have. And that's the home field advantage. And so you have to really weigh all those options. So I hear you loud and clear on that, and, you know, I'm, we're continuing to evaluate that to see if that might be something that we move on this year or in the future. Of course, now, as everybody knows, that uh, this is one of the things that held us up from not being able to do the interview the last time. You got the way flying back here, yeah. and, the, and uh, basically uh, that same week what got pushed back was the uh, looking at sites. How is, you know, you probably can't go into details, obviously, on everything, but how is the the, the hunt for the sites, or the exploring the sites, I should say, how's that going so far? It's going really well, and there's been a huge focus the last, I would say, two or three months, really, since I started, on the transit and transportation options of the various options. Or the various sites. Because one thing we want to make sure is that it's easy to get in and out. And we saw this with the Vias Stadium when we built it. There were some challenges. There was some construction going on when we were building. It made it hard for people to get in and out. That really detracts from the experience. You need to have public transit. You need to figure out if either you have a BART station at the location or you have a way to get to a BART station effectively, whether that's going to be shuttles, light rail, all these different types of things. And so... We're spending a lot of time doing modeling. We have consultants working on saying, hey, here's the game. This is how people are going to arrive and what flows. Where are they going to park? How are they going to take Uber? How's everything going to work with BART or, you know, buses or even ferries like at Howard Terminal? And that is a really critical kind of hurdle to clear for any site to be effective. And that's really where probably the majority of the work is being done over the next like, month or so. But, you know, we're committed. Like the, the key thing this year is we, we need to – identify that site that we say, hey, that's the site we're going with. Because that's a major, major milestone on the path to getting a stadium built, is identifying and picking the site, and then also telling the community, here is the three-year process of things that are going to happen until we break ground and open the stadium. And communicating that very openly and saying, hey, this happens, and then we get our entitlement rights, and then maybe you need legislation passed, or whatever it ends up being, and we can show that to the community, and then we can just track against it. So then we meet in six months and say, hey, we got this done, this, we're going to we're running one month lower on that. It's going to delay a little bit, but we're going to try to make it up here. And I think that can be a more open way to kind of show people how serious we are about getting the ballpark built. Right, right. I, I would just like to ask on this, though, um, some of the themes, because we know theme nights are big in baseball, yeah. you know, especially here in the Bay Area. Do you have any ideas of some newer things you can inject in for theme night? Because, I mean, I see over on the other side, they got singles night. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you, they have LGBT night or whatever. Yeah, we, we've done that. We've, we've done, done, done that, that here. Yeah, um, the Quakes. Too. Yeah, the Quakes. Um, you know, maybe awareness, mental health. I mean, things yeah. of that nature. You know, or autism. They've done all sorts of ones. Yeah. You know what I really like? My favorite one we do in San Jose is we do Mexican Heritage, and we have the luchadors. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we set up a wrestling ring. And they, they wrestle before the game. Oh, my. It is so awesome. And they even wrestled Q, the mascot. Mm-hmm. And it got kind of crazy because they pulled his head off. And it was really a, kind of a tough scene. But, hey, yeah, he's, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Hood Slayer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's big advocate of that. I mean, uh-huh. we, we had him before a few years ago. Had wrestling right outside. And that just got us amped up to go into the game because, you know, those that's guys. The so that, that's, that's the same kind of thing. So I think that could be a way to amplify, like, the Mexican Irish night. Yeah. And I think. The key thing is getting the different communities supporting whatever it is. If you do Italian-American, you want to get, like, you know, all the different people, the Italian-Americans involved and make it a great event and, like, theme it and build it up. And so I think we can do a better job with that. I think it's a great way to make – we have 81 games. So you want to create the excitement as many times as you can, get some new people out to the ballpark. And um, I think we're going to do as much of that as we can. 
Okay, so also people, they say this to me. Now you have this new age ownership. And you guys, well, not ownership, but I guess leadership with you. Mm -hmm. What things, as far as the communal aspect, as far as going out in the community, going to schools and everything, you know, certain different organizations, what plan do you have to kind of reach out and not say it's just not about baseball? We care about you. Well, that's a critical part of running any professional sports team is the community nature of it. And so... Um, you know, and I've done that with the Earthquakes the last six years. We really built a community-minded organization, and that starts with the community fund. It also extends into the community about like, where we're spending our time and resources, how we're getting players out in the community. So I'm actually going to hire, like, basically a, a, a head of external affairs who's going to really be work with our community relations department, but really be strategic about how we connect to the different stakeholders and community organizations and make as big an impact as we can whether it's in West Oakland, whether it's even in the, you know, farther into the East Bay, in Antioch, where do we need to go to actually go into these communities, whether it's a school or a boys and girls club, and use the power of the AIDS and our brand and our history to make a real difference. And that's really who we are. That's in our values. And we need to do a better job, one, identifying that and then making those investments. Um, and I think you'll see a lot more of that this year. I think you'll see additional staff members dedicated to it here at the organization, the front office. And then I think you're just going to see more events, which is, I think, something that we have to do. That's who, that's who we need to be as a, as a club. Uh, definitely uh, one thing I think that might help it out, I don't know how much power you have over this or who you mm-hmm. talk to, uh, definitely one thing I think that would help expand on that is possibly looking into trying to get team stores open back up. I love this community. Is, is yeah. that something you all have to that is, for? Yeah, so um, merchandise is another area that we're taking a really hard look at in the stadium and in the community. Um, you know, whenever I go places, I see these giant dugout stores. Oh. Where, where are the ace dugout stores? You know, we used to have it at Southland Mall. I, I know, I know. So, so I, am, I have made it a strategic objective to figure out a way to get some stores open in meaningful locations. Yes. I want to get a feel from the community about where they should be. You know, we thought about maybe downtown Oakland. We thought about, you know, maybe in some of the mall areas. Like, we want people to be able to embrace the brand and the club and who we are and wear the colors with pride and be able to get the colors. You don't have to just come to the Coliseum. Like, how do you get the cool gear? And and we want more um, variety of merchandise, too. See, that's the other thing that's been a little frustrating, you know, especially, like, you might get a new player like like Healy or something like that, and then you can't even find his jersey. Like that can't happen. Like we've got to be better at those things. We've got to be quicker, and we have to have other distribution channels, like you said. So I think it's a great idea. It's something that's high on my list, and it's something that hopefully we can pull off uh, this season. Okay, with you being biz- part of the business strategy, obviously the lead, lead dog here. What about the jerseys? And when I say the jerseys, we all talk about it. We want more jerseys, especially the green one we used to have. Instead of saying athletics, it says O A K L A N D on it. I there's, mean, there's a lot of work going into that. You know, we have a whole 50th anniversary celebration. Good. It's going to be um, the following year, but we're going to like launch it this year. And so we're working with Majestic and working with the league to design some really amazing stuff. And so stay tuned there. I think that is going to be awesome. They, they the fingers crossed. Yeah. Kelly Green comes back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kelly Green. Hey, 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 don't don't, don't, don't be firmer to deny, but, but yeah. just saying this. Yeah. That one, I, I can just tell you, the one that says Oakland in green, oh, yeah. the, these kids and everybody's in the way. sexy. Oh, definitely sexy, though, man. My, my, hopefully my wife will buy me one, you know, she's going to sexy. In my case, it should be reversed. The wife should be banging. Go give me one. Yeah, Um. Also, too, now, have you been able to talk to this major league? Back? What is your relationship like with Rob Manfred and um, some people back east um, when it just comes to you taking on the job? I know you talked to you know an enormous amount of people yep. over the last two months. So what's that process been like? Well, that that's an area where I need to spend more time, you know, with the different stakeholders, whether it's the other team presidents and the other clubs. There's a lot of learning from what other teams have done well and not well um, that I want to, you know, kind of gin up with them. Uh, obviously, with Major League Baseball, you know, I'm going to be sitting on the International Committee, which is really exciting, Good. and I can bring some of my perspective and um, the interest that I have, um, you know, with that, especially with soccer and everything. And so, the league, I think, is a great resource for us. We have a great commissioner. He's brought years of labor peace. He's someone who is really pro-Oakland and making sure that we get the ballpark built here. And so, 
we're excited to continue to work with him and his team to make it a success. And I'll continue to spend time with him and his group in New York. Or when they're out on the road and seeing them as well. So, I mean, it goes both ways, absolutely. Well, uh, let me talk about the ballpark because it's another question that comes from a friend of mine uh, down in San Jose. Mm-hmm. He's Rico Johnson. What specific ballpark sites are you guys looking at? Because everybody, they read stuff in the papers or they hear stuff, internet, Twitter chatter, but from you, from the horse's mouth, you'd like yeah. to hear, what areas are you really looking at, like, seriously looking at? Not just, uh, but really, like, you know. Oh, you mean the different site locations? Yeah. Right? yeah. People I mean, obviously, interested. one site is here at the Coliseum. Okay. You know, we could build here. Um, there's pros and cons to that. Obviously, you have great transit and infrastructure, and it's already a sports complex, so people are used to coming here. And you have parking. Probably the challenges here is that it's, it's a little far from downtown. You know, can you create the urban kind of vibrant ballpark village here? Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, you, you could have housing here. You could build it on Santana Road, San Jose. So there's possibilities here. There's pros and cons. Um, then, obviously, there are sites closer to the downtown area, in and around Lake Merritt. And those locations, you, know, you have a park station there, which is kind of exciting. Um which is a big positive, but you might not have as much land. So then you have to kind of trade that off. You're like, are you going to be able to really create the vision of what we want to do? And then you have probably the biggest greenfield site, which is Howard Terminal, because you just have tons of space. I mean, you're right on the water. You could have an iconic backdrop of the downtown San Francisco, the Bay Bridge. Um, but you're a little isolated there. There's not a bar station exactly there. So, you know, each you kind of have to look at each possibility. And then you got to look at all the pros and cons. And, like, nothing is perfect, but part of the process of interacting with fans and the community is to understand what people want. And, you know, the kind of stuff I've been hearing so far is, like, hey, they want somewhere that it's got a great fan experience, that it can be loud and fun and a great bleacher section and easy to get to. And, you know, can we make sure we have a stadium that's affordable, that's not going to price everyone out of the of the marketplace? Like, these are all things we're weighing in terms of where we're going to build, how big it's going to be. And hopefully we can get to a point where all that feedback and input comes into a great final product. I'll go ahead and make this be my last question. Uh, just uh, what can you do to, you know, reassure the A's fans out there that are still kind of on the fence, you know? How to reassure them just not just going into this year, but next year that, you know, support this product and that the team's finally heading in the right direction? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think the actions speak louder than words. You know, I think picking a site this year, I think, will be a big moment for the organization. I think people should realize that that is a major milestone in the history of the organization. I also think looking at the improvements we're making even here at the Coliseum, investing in the product, even investing on the baseball side, what players are being signed, you know, bringing Rajay Davis back, proven winner, you know, he's in Game 7 of the World Series, he's in about as big a home run as you can hit, you know, and, you know, and someone who's a great guy in the clubhouse, you know, looking at what we're doing in every aspect of our business, I think if you see the actions that we're taking over the last two or three months, it's all commensurate with, hey, we want this organization to win. We want to have a great long-term ballpark for the community, and we want to do it in Oakland. And so I think all those things together, hopefully people will see. And we're not asking people to you know, believe overnight, to have like an immediate. But, but the thing is, hopefully if they see enough of these things together, I know there's a sleeping giant of A's fans, pun intended, out there. And we just have to bring them back here to the Coliseum. We can have an amazing thing that it can it, it can it can rival anything in sports. Well, you know, Lou Wolf did say in 2013 uh, the key to unlocking the fan base is a downtown stadium, but that he did say that. I mean, it's on record. So, mm-hmm. oh, my, my last question because I know you're a busy man. People talk about over the last few years, you know, the Jackie Robinson programs, you yeah. know, things about yeah. Yeah. the diversity in baseball. Um, you know, um, the East Bay is the uh, a beautiful mix of people from everywhere. You got a lot of Asians, you got a lot of uh, black people, a lot of Latino Americans, as far as a lot of Latinos, whatever. But what is it that you're going to do and that the AIDS organization uh, is going to do to kind of make sure they kind of not steps away from it? Because it seems that with the uh, rise of football, yeah. the international football is very popular, you know, the NBA and things of that nature. What are the A's organization now going to do to reach out to maybe get some of those players back in that should be playing baseball? I, I wish I didn't know I was going to be tall as my dad. I should <laughs> I couldn't say no, <laughs> you know. But you know, to get those guys to come back in and say, hey, you know, there's a place for you. It's a great game. Um, yep. It's a way to take care of your family. It's to be involved with some great people. Yep. Your vision, A's, 
What do you guys? We we need first of all it starts with the camps and clinics, and we're rolling that out this year, where we're going to have more camps and clinics in the different communities, whether it's in Richmond or Oakland or San Leandro. And so we're going to get kids playing at a younger age. We're going to subsidize that. We're even going to put camps and clinics in San Francisco because the Giants ones are so expensive that regular families can't afford it. And that's the thing. We need to make baseball accessible to just regular people. Like, you know, like me growing up in Cleveland, just wanted to play baseball and learning from whether it's former A's players, whether it's a great coach. These are the kind of things you get them early. You know, not all of them are going to play Major League Baseball, but they're going to fall in love with the game. And we need to do more of that. We need to do it in every possible community, underprivileged, anywhere. And I think that's something that's a huge strategic objective, not only for us, but for the league. You know, when I sit down with the commissioner or the staff in New York, that's something they're concerned about. Not enough people are playing. And we have to do everything we can to get people back on the diamond. Great, 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 good. Great answer. That's all you need. Great answer. Dave, thank you again for your time, and thanks for the uh, opportunity for uh, allowing us uh, an underground <laughs> bunch of ragtag broadcasters <laughs> to get the chance. Oh, yeah, to also, so uh, you, you mentioned him when you first got on. What about some of us underground guys getting maybe a little bit more access to maybe talk to some guys like you? you know, we're talking to the right guy. I think that can easily be done. I think that's a big part of where media is going, and I think you know, providing players, team presidents, everyone, getting more – you know, authentic and kind of organic media, what you guys are doing, this is where it's at. This is what people want to hear. It's real. I think you're doing a great job. So we, we can make all that happen. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Dave. Thanks, Kevin.